Hi, uh, my name is Fitton. I'm going to talk to you about um, how to reach the multimedia web from any platforms with MVP WebKit. So, giving a, an outline of the talk after introducing myself quickly, I will present uh, WP uh, architecture, giving a high level overview at least of, of how it works. And uh, I will present some of the W3C specifications that are related with uh, multimedia. And I will uh, briefly explain how to um, use all those features from a browser called Cobb, and then how to deploy that on embedded platforms with Yocto. And then I will move on to a totally different topic that is related with how to integrate WP inside uh, Vistron applications. So um, for my, I'm a WebKit committer and reviewer. I've been working on WebKit for about 10 years now. Um, and I also work in Vistron as part of my daily job as a, at Igalia. And, um, yeah, a few words about Igalia. We are about uh, 110 Igalians nowadays, uh, spread around the world, working remotely. And we provide um, consulting services around web engines, graphics, the kernel, and multimedia, of course, various areas. Um, so, talking about WP uh, architecture. So, WP is a WebKit port. So WebKit, what is WebKit? It's a web engine um, that was initially started by the KDE people and then was forked by Apple and renamed to WebKit. And they wanted to use it to, to build their own web, in, uh, web browser called Safari. So, nowadays it's uh, mainly maintained by uh, Apple and, uh, and us at the area. Um, so WebKit allows you to, in your application, to embed um, web pages uh, using usually uh, a widget that is provided by uh, different kinds of uh, WebKit ports. Uh, so there are ports targeting different operating systems or, or rendering engine. Um, so specifically, WebKit um, is uh, relying heavily nowadays on uh, multiprocess. That means that your application, it's called usually the UI process in, in WebKit, is going to, to spawn quite a few processes. You see only one there in that graph, but there's more. So there's the web process that's in charge of um, parsing HTML, doing JavaScript uh, compilation and run runtime. And there's another browser, uh, process called network that is uh, in charge of doing all um, the networking. And uh, more recently, another process was added called uh, GPU. It's used currently only on Apple platforms. And that's in charge of um, talking to the GPU, like doing, um, I think they even do media stuff there nowadays. Um, so WP self is one of those WebKit ports, and it's maintained in uh, WebKit.org. We we did the initial upstream in 2017, I think, and it has a six month release cycle, the same as um, WebKit GTK. That's because we maintain WebKit GTK as well, so we decided to synchronize the two cycles. And it's the big difference with uh, other ports is that it's not, uh, not uh, doesn't have um, dependency on any widget toolkit. That means that it's uh, the application that's in charge of doing the final rendering of web pages and handling uh, input events. Uh, but that's provided using third-party modules we call backends. Um, 
There are mainly two backends nowadays, the one we call FDO, uh, because it's relying on different uh, uh, libraries from freelance.org, and another one called RDK, which is maintained by um, the Comcast and RDK people. Um, there, in that backend specifically, they, they have support for custom hardware set-top boxes. So you, can, you can use that if you have really specific hardware. But usually what we recommend is to use the FDO backend um, because it's the most uh, well-maintained uh, upstream and the community is, is getting bigger around it. There are more and more users. So that's where most of the work is going nowadays. And um, in that backend, usually you need to have uh, Wayland EGL extensions provided by Mesa or uh, Drivers. Um, even though nowadays you can do pure software um, rendering. Yeah, initially it was the only EGL, but now it's also shared memory backends if needed. Um, so as this talk is about multimedia, I wanted to say a few words about Gstreamer because that's the framework we use in uh, WebKit and in WB. Uh, I guess you know it already, but uh, it's a um, framework that relies heavily on uh, pipelines that uh, interconnect elements together in, to form a data processing pipeline that can be used to, uh, to build media players, video editors, uh, streaming servers, and any kind of multimedia application. And the cool things about that is that it has a wide range of plugins and the, it supports quite a lot of uh, platforms nowadays. So Android, Mac OS, Windows, they are all supported. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's the main framework to use. Uh, the API is quite nice as well. Um, so I will talk about some specifications um, that are implemented by WP. Um, not all of them, though. There are hundreds of them. Um, you can check the WebKit website if you want to have the full list. I will focus only on the uh, multimedia ones in this talk. Um, so the first one I want to mention is the source extension, MSE. That's used for adaptive streaming on the web, and it's used quite a lot by uh, websites like uh, YouTube, Netflix, so on, Dailymotion, Vimeo, all those websites use MSE nowadays. Um, a nice thing about it is that uh, there's a library called dash.js that allows you to convert uh, any dash stream into a MSE web page. And that's really good because Dash is widely used in the industry of broadcasting and streaming. So I would recommend you to try to use that in order to recycle your Dash stream to NSE. Um, in WP, we, we have a major backend NSE nowadays. So we have enabled it by default in, uh, in build and runtime. And uh, I will say a few words about how we implemented that in, in WP. Um, so the web page would enqueue maxed chunks using JavaScript into an object called source buffer. And in, in WebKit internally, we build a pipeline that's going to demux those chunks in uh, audio and video separate tracks. And then uh, those uh, elementary streams are injected back into WebCore for further processing. And when playback is needed, we have built a custom GStreamer element 
um, that is able to uh, inject those video video and audio buffers into the, the pipeline of the player. <clears throat> so yeah, we have a quite a big number now of uh, of gestional elements inside WebKit. So for each backend, usually we have a source element. So that's the first one. <laughs> Um, another spec I wanted to talk about is uh, encrypted media extension. And that's about bringing uh, protected content playback into the web. That was meant to replace content decryption that was usually provided by Flash um, using custom frameworks. So now it's uh, over formalized into a specification. And it's used widely now by uh, a vast amount of content providers, so Netflix, Disney, Apple, they all use uh, that spec to, to serve protected video, uh, and it's actually also combined with uh, Tennessee. And in WP, well, we have to, we have to disable that by default in, in releases because it depends, it highly depends on the platform you need to run this on. And usually what you need is a, a backend called content decryption module that is going to be in charge of uh, decryption. And uh, we can't integrate those directly in WebKit. It's a third party uh, uh, module. And that has to be integrated. Uh, it depends on each product. Uh, and uh, in WP, what we did is um, when the streamer demuxer is detecting um, protected content, usually like uh, in MPEG4, it's signal with PSSH box. So when that box is de detected in the in the stream, we we receive a, an event from the pipeline in WP. And we are then able to probe the platform for the supported CDNs using a API called OpenCDN. It is uh, formalized in, uh, in two different runtimes implemented there. And the first one is maintained by RDK people, Conquest, and it's called a Thunder. And the second one is called Sparkle CDM, and it's it's maintained by uh, by us at EIR. Uh, although I have to say it's not really a wrapper, so it relies internally on plugins as well. Um, we we don't currently publish any of those plugins. Uh, that might change in the future, but currently you have only the wrapper, and you need to write your own old plugins if you need to use that. And then in the playback pipeline, um, those CDMs are used using uh, decryptor that are custom system elements again. And they are able to use the, the API to decrypt and render a video. In the case of uh, secure video uh, rendering, you also need to have a custom video sync usually in order to guarantee that uh, video frames remain in the GPU space. So it's it's really a specific setup most of the time. That's what we, have to, we can't really enable that by default. Um, moving on to media capabilities. Um, that spec is used by web pages to probe web engine features related with uh, decoding and encoding. And usually they do that to provide a better user experience related with a playback. For instance, uh, one aspect of the spec is that you can you can know if you if the platform is supporting hardware accelerated playback or if the decoders are power efficient or not. Uh, so that's part of the spec. Uh, we have enabled that in WP. Um, it's not enabled at runtime yet because the spec is not um, finalized yet. 
So maybe soon in the future we, we will enable it by default. Um, the way we implemented that in WP is by probing the GStreamer registry, which is a, an element in GStreamer, keeping track of all plugins available on the platform. And we are able to like uh, look for decoders and encoders there. And when a specific uh, media type is uh, queried using a line type, we have a mapping to uh, GStreamer caps to look up for the support encoders and, and decoders. That's the way, way we implemented that. It's not the best way to do it, but uh, it's the best um, way we came up with. Um, another spec I wanted to talk about is web audio that allows you to do low latency playback of audio. For instance, targeting games and music applications or DJ and any kind of web page that needs to provide uh, audio feedback to the user, you should definitely use uh, web audio. And that backend has been in WebKit for a few years already and it's quite mature and enabled by default. Uh, we implemented it in WP using uh, another pipeline that is able to actually decode um, audio from, uh, from a file source, for instance, and then provide the decoded uh, about 32 samples, PCM samples to, to, uh, to WebCore. That's because in WebCore, there's uh, the web audio nodes uh, implemented there that do the uh, internal processing. And then when you need to play those samples, we have a, another pipeline that is able to uh, to inject those samples back towards the audio device. So that's that's how we implemented that in in WP. Another thing I wanted to talk about is media capture, um, and that spec is defining how to access webcam, microphone even screen capture in order to um, expose those devices to, to the web that's mainly used for web RTC. And uh, it's enabled currently only in developer builds. It's still a bit new. Um, uh, we plan, however, to enable that in um, WP236 by default. Um, and we implemented support for that in WP using um, an API, a GStream API called uh, GST Device Monitor that's able to um, list capture devices and uh, render devices. And when we have uh, selected one device, we are able to capture those like, video frames or audio samples towards a uh, special sync that is able to collect that data and inject it to the web core for our consumption or for playback. Uh, playback is done is done with uh, another source element, as you might guess. And for screen capture, we implemented support for that quite recently using a pipe wire. So if you have a system running pipe wire, you are you should be able to to do screencasting called the uh, Get Display Media Media Capture API from JavaScript. And that's that's working quite well, at least on, on my desktop. And it's going to be released in WP234 uh, behind a setting. That's, that's a runtime setting. Um, so when you have access to capture devices, you want to have uh, inter interaction between browsers, basically using WebRTC. Another use case of WebRTC is um, one too many broadcasting, and that's uh, that 
WebRTC fe feature is implemented in WD using the WebRTC, where we also integrate with the uh, customer encoders and decoders in order to provide some some hardware accelerated uh, encoding and decoding features, depending on, on the devices. The problem with that backend is that it's not enabled by default because bundling LibreRTC in releases is uh, just too big. And there's another issue related with uh, licensing of uh, borrowing SSL that's kind of preventing usage of uh, the backend in uh, most applications. So to fix this situation, we have a plan to provide a gestion of WebRTC backend. We have a prototype already, um, but it's going to be upstream uh, hopefully soon in uh, WebKit.org. And we plan to perhaps ship it in um, WP236, hopefully. And then another thing you want, might want to do when you have WebRTC working is to do recording. And I have a prototype for that as well. It's not upstream yet because it's using unreleased GStreamer 1.19 features, um, maybe the GST transcoder library. So for the one that's released, we should be able to upstream that uh, that backend. So that's it for the specs. There's more. Um, but I think it gives already a good overview of uh, what WP can do related with multimedia, which is already a uh, good, good amount of uh, things. So when you have, you actually need a browser now, and we do provide one. It's called Cog, and it has various backends that, uh, depending on how the graphics are set up on your platform, could be used. So, for instance, if you have a, a Wayland compositor, we have a Wayland client that is able to use to talk to the compositor. If you run X, uh, you can use the X11 backend. GTK4 as well. And for full screen rendering, we have a dedicated backend called DRM. And we also have a use case related with headless rendering. And Korg is able to select the right backend. Uh, but otherwise, if you want, you can still uh, override the default behavior using a command line option. And by default, currently at least, uh, Cog provides only one web view, so there's no tabs, for instance. Um, there might be support for multiple web views uh, at some point. We have been working on that, but uh, it's not ready to be upstream yet. And another cool thing about Cog is that it can be controlled with debugs. So that means you can do page navigation using a dedicated uh, Dbus API. So we'll talk more about that in the coming slides. I wanted to highlight, highlight one use case uh, related with full screen rendering, where you, you don't really necessarily need a Wayland compositor. So for instance, for kiosk applications or set-top boxes, um, you could use Coq for and its DRM plugin to, to do full screen uh, rendering of the web page. So if you have um, a working DRM, DRM and KMS setup on your device, uh, that should work out out of the box. And you can easily check with, uh, if you have KMS cube working, it should also work. Uh, Coq should also work uh, using the same approach. And what we do is we usually import Wayland buffers, or even better, if DMF buffs are available, we can import them into GB GBM buffer objects and do the, the rendering directly on uh, 
using the backend. And for input events, we, we use libinput, so touch, and keyboard, mouse, or supported. Even multi-touch, I think, so it's quite nice. Um, another use case is I want to talk about is headless uh, code. We had recently a um, use case about that related with Apple Music Audio Playback. And that's because the SDK provided by Apple is only working on web engines, so this JavaScript API basically, and that's not usable in native application. So we need uh, some kind of web engine to, to support the, that uh, streaming service. And it was even, even better on a device that has no GPU. So we had to come up with a, a new backend that is faking uh, rendering. And it's, it's clocked at 30 FPS by default. That means um, the internal clock of WP is still like uh, behaving more or less normally. So yeah, it's it's kind of a fake uh, fake output because we, we don't do anything with uh, the frames in that backend. We just notify them to, to WP. And more specific to that Apple service, we also designed a dedicated debus bridge that allows us to remote control the audio player, make calls to the SDK. So that's quite uh, quite nice. I think it's a good showcase of Cog in a really uh, constrained environment. So now you have a browser and a web engine. You want to deploy it in uh, in some AMX board. I will use Yocto as a showcase for that. Um, we do provide a layer called MetaWebKit that um, uh, provides all you need to to um, enable WP into your BSP. So we have recipes for backends, WP, code. Um, and I would recommend to use the Poki reference distro or any distro that provides a recent enough gesture version. It's pretty important if you need to use multimedia. And then you need to to have the meta freescale layer if you want to use uh, the NXP kernel, for instance, or the NXP driver. <clears throat> but I would like to recommend first to try the native driver um, because nowadays it's the uh, it's working quite well provided that you have enough uh, recent enough kernel on Mesa and it works quite well on MX6 and MX8 so and also I would recommend to try to use the FDO backend by default um, either with uh, within a Roland compositor or without any compositor if you have a working KMS setup on your device. And regarding multimedia playback, you are also covered using the uh, video for Linux uh, decoders. So you have uh, hardware acceleration support as well. And that's that's working quite well in WP. We have to make some adjustments, but uh, we'll go on that uh, in coming in slides. And Specifically about AMX6, I was able to, by enabling the Coda driver, for, of course, it's a requirement, I was able to, to reach um, WHD in WP, even though in some cases, the, depending on what the web, web page is displaying, uh, there was a bit of um, stuttering in animations, but that can be avoided if you have a lower resolution video. Like, for instance, on YouTube, they provide Full HD and 720p. So you can force uh, 720p by default using a spe special environment variable, for instance. And that provides a better user experience, even if the resolution is a bit lower. Um, another 
Uh, SOC I wanted to talk about is uh, the MX8M. Um, here you have to use the Intro G1 driver um, that was developed mainly by the Colorado people on Angutronics. Thank you to, to them. Uh, most of that work was uh, related, uh, released in the kernel 512, if I'm correct. And the status I was able to assess on the device I have here is, of course, FullHD was working as expected because it's quite powerful uh, hardware. And um, 4K as well uh, for VP8 and H264. I was not able to, to test VP9 and HEVC uh, because at the time I tested that, the uh, support was not uh, in mainline yet. But hopefully uh, that can be assessed as well. Now we had to, uh, as I was saying before, we had to make a few adjustments in, in WP. Uh, one of them was related with video rendering. We have a video sync in WP, and that sync initially was supporting only RGBA. So we had to um, make some adjustments there because the hardware decoders usually output YUV, for instance, uh, MD12 or I420. So in order to avoid conversion, we we added support to of those formats into our video sync. So that's uh, enabling better uh, zero copy uh, rendering. And the last format listed there is A420. It's related with uh, VP9 um, with Alpha that. Um, that is decoded by the VPX decoder now, currently. So it's a bit of a special format, but we are actually now handle it in, in WP as well. And fortunately, if you can't use the NAV driver, you have to use the proprietary NXP driver. But the at least you are covered in WP as well, because we if you use the AMX decoder, um, we added support in the video sync for the uh, video converts, custom element that is necessary to be behind uh, the summer AMX decoders because the, the UV format out outputted by those decoders is a bit uh, unconventional and it requires uh, that video convert in element in order to uh, to have a good support for zero copy. Um, I want to jump into a different, slightly different topic now um, that's related with using WP in different applications. Um, why would you want to do that? For instance, um, in the broadcasting industry nowadays, at least in software like OBS, you can do transitions between scenes using so-called stinger animations. And those usually are videos encoded in VP9 with uh, Alpha channel. That's why I was mentioning F420 before, because in some projects, we would like to use WP to, to render those videos. Another use case I had in mind was uh, related with live TV. It's quite common nowadays to see uh, additional information displayed on the bottom of the screen. It's called lower thirds. And those kind of overlays, uh, yeah, they are quite common nowadays and could be rendered with, uh, with a web engine. Another use case is scoreboard, again, overlays. Uh, again, HTML overlays can be used there. So you might wonder why, why would you like to move to WP and GCM for that if you have a working solution already? Well, usually those tools um, are not free software and 
the user custom format for overlays. So if you want to migrate to a different um, uh, tool, you need to, in some cases, uh, rewrite your overlays. So using HTML instead, which is an open, open, openly specified format, um, it would be better in for interoperability process. And also, on the you have to take into account that there's a wide, uh, there's a lot of people now um, doing web design, and it represents uh, a huge work um, workforce that can be used to produce those overlays, and they are quite uh, competent, and they can write uh, nice websites, animations, and so on. Um, so, so I think it would be a good industry to to move on at some point. And another 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 aspect is related with Gistrova that provides uh, since it supports uh, many platforms nowadays, it's quite easy to integrate in uh, various kinds of environments and platforms. So if you want to to build your own overlay editor, it's it's quite possible now. And actually, I made one as a demo uh, already. So so you can write new projects with uh, with that uh, combination of uh, frameworks. So how how did you how did we use how do we use WP in Gstreamer? We have a custom source element. Um, that was upstreamed in Gstreamer plugins file. And the use case for that is overlays. Even cloud browsers could be designed with that element, perhaps. Um, internally, it's using a web view. That's, um, the source element is able to make a video stream out of those, out of that web view. And even we recently added audio support for that. So you can even inject audio frames from the web view into the pipeline if needed. And there are two runtime configurations. If you have a GPU, you can use a zero copy um, approach. And that is underneath relying on EGL images. And if you don't have a GPU, you can use the uh, software rasterizer. Usually that's LLVM pipe, but you do something else. Um, I gave you two examples for those two use, use cases. The first one is if you have a GPU, you can build a run um, a web page basically with G display, and uh, you can even interact with the page like a click and a scroll. Uh, so it's quite fun to, at least to play with uh, GCWP. And the same can be done with uh, without GPU. Uh, although that's a thing I recently fixed in Gstreamer, um, so you need to have a quite recent version on this. <clears throat> but yeah, the difference between those two pipelines is the, the video sync that's being used. So that in the first case, GL video caps are used. And in the second case, the uh, raw video caps are used. Another example, I wanted to show is how to do overlays. So it's quite simple. You need to build a pipeline with a compositor. That's a kind of a video mixer. Um, if you want to also mix uh, the audio samples, you can use an uh, audio mixer. Usually, most cases, you only need the uh, video part. But you can do an audio mixer if you want. And we have two sources there, the web page and the uh, file source. Or you could have a, a video for links source there, for instance, or any kind of um, media source. And you have to do two things mainly to make this work out, because the, the compositor is going to um, to be configured to overlay the web page on top of the uh, other media source. So you need to make sure the uh, the background of the web page is transparent. So there's a property for that in uh, WP source. And you need to configure the Z order uh, value on the, uh, the pads of the, of the compositor so that uh, 
one stream is on top of the other, basically. And then you can do rendering, like in that pipeline, or um, you could do encoding, streaming to RTMP or RTSP or even WebRTC. And actually, that's what I did in a uh, demo I wrote, where I was able to um, to do dynamic overlays with um, and control them with uh, an OJS application. So I had a kind of admin interface in that application, able to edit overlays on the fly. And then that was mixed with uh, another video. I think it was my webcam be any kind of uh, video source again. And the resulting video was uh, encoded and uh, streamed to uh, Janus SFU WebRTC um, server. And then it could be consumed by uh, other people using their browser, using a WebRTC. So it was quite cool. Um, and that demo is explained in that YouTube video. You can you can watch it if you want. <clears throat> so yes, that's it. That's the, the end of the talk. Um, I listed there some links where, for instance, in wpwebkit.org, we provide all the tables you need for WP. The listed WP docs in the Gstreamer website, so useful if you want to see how you can use GCWP, how you can configure it and use it in pipelines. And the overlay we, we maintain in our GitHub space. So that's it. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Thank you.